from Coleraine in County Londonderry, we present Let the Bible Speak. It's good to have you join with us as we spend 15 minutes around the Word of God, preaching Christ in all His fullness. And this is Leslie Curran saying hello and welcome to the programme. It's good to have you tuning in as Gospel Minister and Evangelist in Coleraine, the Reverend Roger Higginson, is here to let the Bible speak. Dear listeners, we welcome you today in the Saviour's precious name and we have been praying much uh, for our land at this time, unprecedented times, uh, unsettling times for many, uncertain times, but we do know that we have a risen Saviour a reigning Saviour and a returning Saviour. And those who know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour do not need to worry. The Bible says, Perfect love casteth out fear. And we trust and pray that even today as we consider the Word of God together, that the Lord will draw near, that He will speak to us very clearly through His precious Word, and that just wherever you are in life, whether you're backslidden, whether you're not converted, whether you're a child of God who loves the Lord and nevertheless has fear and anxiety at this time, we pray that the Lord will glorify his own Son and exalt his own name as we consider the Word of God together. It's Colossians today. We're reading from chapter 1, verse 21. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 21. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you, to fulfil the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labour, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. And we know the Lord will bless the reading of his precious word. I want to speak uh, today and over the next two or three Lord's Days, God willing, upon the subject of the hope of the gospel. Paul speaks about the hope of the gospel here in Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 23. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached, the hope of the gospel. Many in our world are living without hope. We see the awful rise in our day and generation of escapism, people turning to things that do not satisfy, things that seem to remove them temporarily from reality, and very often things that are harmful, just to give them perhaps a blind hope in the midst of a hopeless world. People oftentimes turn to things like uh, drugs, 
alcoholism and various substances to dull the senses or to enliven the senses, whatever it may be, but to distort the senses in some way that seems to remove them from the reality of the life in the world in which we live. Things like suicide and self-harm are on their eyes, as is poor mental health, low self-esteem, various forms of mental illness and ailments and disorders. These things are on their eyes oftentimes because many have no hope in this world. Whenever Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus in the second chapter, he speaks about the glorious change that's wrought in a person's life whenever they come to Christ and they're born again of the Spirit of God. And in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 12, Paul reminds the Ephesians what they were in their unconverted days. Those days whenever they did not know the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says... That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope (coughs) and without God in the world. Having no hope and without God in the world. I wonder, does that describe you? You're without God? You're without Christ. You're really a stranger to the covenants and promises of God. You haven't availed yourself of them. And the result of that is that presently, now, in this world, you're living and dying without hope. Many would re-echo the words of Jonah, who said in Jonah chapter 4 and verse number 8, when it says that Jonah fainted. And wished himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. Multitudes, whenever a trial comes or bereavement comes, have no hope. The Christian, however, should be altogether different. Whenever the Apostle Paul was speaking about the death of believers and the wonderful reality of the coming again of the Lord Jesus Christ, he said in 1st Thessalonians chapter number 4 and verse number 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. And Paul takes the believer there and the church of Jesus Christ, the blood-bought church, and he makes a great distinction between them and the rest of the world. He says that whenever we have loved ones who die in Christ, we have a wonderful hope. But the world out there has no hope. They have nothing to hope in and they have no hope even to offer. And I don't wonder at this reality that we live in a world that is void of hope. I don't wonder at it at all because the humanistic and the atheistic philosophies that are presented to us day and daily through virtually every available medium present to us a a, a form of life that seems to be absolutely futile. We are discouraged from believing in God at all. No God. No real meaning. No purpose in life. No destiny. No answers. No hope. If you choose not to believe in God or you choose to deny the Bible and put it to one side, the only result can really be that there's no hope. If we're just here by chance, we're here by accident, we're here by a cosmic mistake, we have evolved from nothing over billions of years and we're continuing to evolve, but the world is waxing worse and worse and there's all the threat of climate change and all of these things, the outlook and the future is very bleak indeed. We've no reason for being here. We've no one to turn to whenever things go wrong or times are hard. We have no destiny, no real reason, no purpose, no answers, no hope. And I don't wonder, therefore, that people indulge in escapism and turn to even suicide and self-harm and different things because we're living in a world where many are living without hope. But, you know, the only thing that is worse in this world than having no hope 
is having a false hope. Give me a person who says, I have no hope, and I can point them to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, where there's all the hope in the world that a life can be transformed and changed and giving meaning and vitality and purpose. But give me a person who has got a false hope and it's a different ball game altogether. We live in a world of deception, especially in these closing days of time. The Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 4, speaking of the last days, said, Take heed that no man deceive you. And that was the first thing that the Lord said in answer to the question that was asked by the disciples. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And the very first thing that the Lord says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. And that would indicate, therefore, that in the last days, deception is going to be very, very prevalent. The Bible also speaks about the deceitfulness of, of sin. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13 exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin has a way of deceiving us into thinking that it's not all that serious, it's not all that dangerous, and God sweeps it under the carpet. And our hearts can be hardened the more we go on in sin because sin is very deceitful. And then multitudes as well will be deceived in the last days through the coming man of sin, the Antichrist. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 9 speaks of him uh, whenever it says the man of sin shall be revealed just before the coming of the Saviour, a few years before that. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and all deceivableness of unrighteous name, unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God sent them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. What's your hope today? Maybe you've got no hope. Maybe you've got a false hope. I trust that you've got the hope of the gospel. We've just given us something of an introduction and we'll continue this, God willing, next time. You've been listening to Let the Bible Speak. If we can be of any further spiritual help or if you'd like to receive some free gospel literature, we invite you to write to us. Our mailing address is Let the Bible Speak, Reverend Roger Higginson, 30 Knockland Grove, Coleraine, BT 52 1WR. Let the Bible Speak, Reverend Roger Higginson, 30 Knockland Grove, Coleraine, BT 52 1WR. You may hear Reverend Higginson preach each Lord's Day at 11.30am and 6.30pm at his church here in Coleraine on the Cloyfin Road, just at the Bushmills Roundabout. For further information, you may phone us on 7032 0266. 7032 0266. We assure you of a warm welcome at all of the services and we look forward to having you visit with us. Thank you for listening today. May the Lord richly bless you. And don't forget to tune in on this same station at the same time next week when once again we turn to the scriptures and let the Bible speak.